five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Following the Second World War, the American military immediately began working on drone interceptors and reconnaissance vehicles. For example, in 1955, the U.S. Army had modified the cheap piston engine RP-4 target drone into the RP-71 drone reconnaissance plane. And the U.S. Navy had developed and deployed the QH-50 Dash drone helicopter. By 1959, the Air Force's first pilotless interceptor, the Beaumark, was operational, as was a massive, autonomous, intercontinental, nuclear-armed SM-62 Snark. The Ryan Aeronautical Company had already perfected the jet-powered Q2 Fire V target drone and the ADM-20 Quail decoy drone. In 1959, Ryan began working on a long-range reconnaissance version of the Fire V, as it was an in-house project. Between the Gary Powers U2 shootdown over Russia and the change from the Eisenhower to the Kennedy administrations, all funding for such programs was halted until 1962 when the Air Force started the Big Safari Procurement Program. Big Safari was an attempt to streamline the contracting system by allowing the modification of existing platforms, and under it, a small contract was awarded to Ryan Aeronautical for a reconnaissance drone with a range of 2,000 miles. The Q2C was modified to the new Model 147A, or Lightning Bug Standard. It needed bigger wings and many other modifications, but it was a fire be drone at its core. As a result of Ryan's previous development work, it was ready in only two months. Since the Lightning Bug was just an upgraded, modified, and somewhat stealthier version of the standard fire be target drone, reliability was not really the problem. The concern was, would it be able to get through enemy defenses and return with its payload it seemed that the standard anti-aircraft systems would be sufficient anti-drone measures. This was the final hurdle towards acceptance. On April 27, 1962, the Lightning Bug drone was tested against five frontline Air Force interceptors. Five F-106 Delta Darts were scrambled to intercept it, and each jet shot four missiles at the single drone, but none stopped it. An unmanned drone had penetrated a genuine first world attempt to intercept it despite being just a modified version of the very target drone that the pilots had trained against in the past. The Air Force's leadership, convinced of the drone's survivability, was now ready to put increased resources behind drone development. A contract was awarded to Ryan for nine more improved B models to be scratch built. By 1963, the first operational Air Force drone reconnaissance unit was working as part of the 4080th Strategic Reconnaissance Wing. There was still considerable resistance within the Air Force, but the units continued to improve, and by 1964 they were up to the Model 147E. The Vietnam conflict was the first time that true drone reconnaissance technology was used operationally and in multiple forms. Lightning bug drones were being extensively operated for reconnaissance flights, and additionally, multiple countries were still using the Fire V target drones. In Vietnam, the small drones were proving difficult to interdict, and the Lightning bug was gaining in popularity with the Air Force as it successfully flew dynamically risky, but politically safe, unmanned reconnaissance missions across Vietnam and China. These successes led to many countries advancing the development of domestic drones. Ironically, a lightning bug drone that crashed in China was reverse engineered and developed into a system that China still uses today. Yes, it was that good. And that is the birth of the modern reconnaissance drones that we have to this day. I'm Max of Max's Models. Have a nice day.